Welcome to the select board meeting of March 20th, 2019. Welcome everybody. Uh, to start off the meeting, I have a um, statement I would like to read. The Town of Hadley provides high quality services to residents, visitors, and business people without regard to race, color, religion, national origin, ancestry, sex, gender identity, age, handicap, disability, participation in discrimination complaint related activities, sexual orientation, genetics, or active military, or veteran status, or any other basis prohibited under the applicable law. Non-discrimination and equal opportunity will be the policy of the town in all of its programs and activities. And therefore, we will now open our up to the consent agenda. And we have on our consent agenda, get this little thing working over here. We have quite a consent agenda this evening. Mm -hmm. We have minutes for November 20th, 2018. We have warrants, PR 1936, AP 1936, AP 1935, PR 1937. We have sign election warrant. We have Happy Valley Comedy, One Mill Valley Road, Suite B, March 30th, 2019. 4 to 7 p.m. must meet conditions set forth by the fire chief and building inspector. We have DPW end of probationary period for Peter Cloth. Use of the town common for WGBY Asparagus Festival June 1st, 2019 from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. We have a one day liquor license for WGBY Asparagus Festival beer tasting tent. June 1st, 2019, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. We have a one-day liquor license for the top of the campus, Mullen Center, Harlem Globetrotters, April 7th, 2019, from 12.30 to 4. They have two licenses. A one-day liquor license for the top of the campus for the Mullen Center, Trevor Noah Comedy Show, April 12th, 2019, from 6 to 11 p.m., two licenses also. One day liquor license for the top of the campus, Mullen Center, commencement ball, May 3rd from uh, 8, no, that's, yeah, 8 to 12.30 a.m. Live entertainment license for 110 Grill Management, that's an establishment coming in on Route 9 at 335 Russell Street. And a common vehicular license for 110 Grill Management at 335 Russell Street. We have a one day liquor license for top of the campus, reception for coaches, and Administrators Football Performance Center, Jim and Ellen Hunt Room, June 12th, 2019, from 3.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. <coughs> Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Is there any further discussion? No. Seeing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I, with exception, I guess I'll <coughs> abstain from the WGBY Asparagus Festival, because sometimes I'm involved <coughs> in that, so. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move on to the public comments. Is there anybody here that has any public comments this evening? Yes? Yes. Could you Hi. stand and tell me your name and where you, where you live? Sue Oppenheimer from Golden Court. Mm -hmm. I have a bad back. Would you mind if I sat? No. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, my statement tonight has to do with creating a human rights commission in the town of Hadley that addresses racism and bigotry in this town. I've lived in this town for 15 years and I've witnessed overt racism. I've lived all over the country and I've never seen the likes of Hadley. For years I've been myself a victim of extreme anti-Semitism and occasionally I stand in the middle of town throughout the years addressing racism and bigotry. And my sign says address, address racism and bigotry in Hadley and remove racism and bigots from our Hadley Housing Board. For three years I held my sign. I've had a lot of people come up and give me support but everybody in town that's, you know, from the select board to the town manager to anybody that I've discussed this with and people from DHCD to the executive director has not addressed this issue at all. One of the times I was holding the sign, a teacher came out of Hopkins Academy and said, we have no racism in Hadley. It was invented by the Gazette. And then they said, this is two weeks after the main uh, story on the Gazette had to do with the students have to form their own uh, coalition. 
against racism and bigotry. And at the last Mother's Club, Meet the Candidate, my question about racism and bigotry was thrown out and it was denied, with big denied written on a piece of paper. An employee of the Senior Center told me to turn my head the other <coughs> way when, when, when Jewish stars and books were, were, were hanging on one of our board members' front porch for a year and a half and they weren't taken down no matter how many people I came for help. They told me to just turn my head the other way and pretend it wasn't happening. And then um, also this board, this person now is sitting on our Hadley Housing Board. He said, shut up you effing Jew at a meeting and, and now he is sitting on our Hadley Housing Board. We have another person on our Hadley Housing Board that said we don't want any blacks or Hispanics coming from Holyoke. I've gone to so many people in town about this and when I see that some people are like getting together now and, and dealing with a situation that's been in the paper, I wonder how I slipped through the crack. I don't know if it's because I'm a woman, I don't know if it's because I live in low, low income housing, but all of a sudden everyone's on the bandwagon dealing with racism and bigotry. And I've been coming for years, you know, voicing my stories. Northampton and Amherst have human rights commissions. East Hampton is now forming one. Hadley has a really big problem, and I think it's about time we create a commission against racism and bigotry. Um, so all I have to say, thank you. We certainly will take that under advisement. There's not anything that we will discuss tonight because it is not on our agenda. Right. Um, but we will take it under advisement. Um, the uh, Golden Court area is um, under the purview of the state, so we will Hopefully but it's true, but I still live in the town of Hadley. This, I know that. I'm just saying that I'm just saying that it does come under the purview of the state, but the, we will take this up at another time. Sure. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything this evening? Okay. All right. We will move on to David. I'm going to skip over you. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, we will go to Dr. McKenzie if you would like to delve into the uh, education uh, budget. I would love to do that. Sorry, signing in so I don't forget that I'm here. Thank you. Here I am. I believe that members of the Finance Committee and that all the members of the Select Board and David, you have a copy of what is a snapshot of where we're at currently with the budget. I would like to thank the town administrator, my fellow department heads, and members of the fin Finance Committee and the Select Board for the, one, my colleagues, fellow department heads, for how collaboratively they we work together to try to ensure that everyone's uh, needs and priorities are met. I really appreciate the time that the Finance Committee takes and the Select Board takes to understand the budget. We are well aware that the school department budget is uh, represents roughly half of the town's overall budget. So this is a major expense for the town. We appreciate the generosity that the town demonstrates towards its schools and the support for its schools. I'm going to first let you know that this, you will notice when I walk you through the data at the, at the um, top of the handout, that if the fiscal year, if F fiscal year 20 were to begin tomorrow, the budget right now would be, the school department budget would be looking at a hundred and roughly $23,000 deficit. However, you'll see at the end of this that there are several unknown still. So I'm not at a point where that is giving me huge concern. We continue to get more accurate data and more information and those, those numbers change. So at the top, this is a summary of revenues, of what revenues were in FY19 and what we anticipate at this moment in time revenues to be in fiscal year 20. The dollar change from one fiscal year to the other and the percent change. In the FY20 local contribution column, you see a 2.6% increase. That is the increase that Mr. Nixon included in the, his budget presentation to the select board just a couple of weeks ago. And we very much appreciate that increase. Circuit breaker, circuit breaker is money that we receive for costs associated with educating students who have special needs. When the cost of educating a child with special needs exceeds four times what is called foundation, foundation is the amount of money that the state determines is 
the minimum amount of money required to provide an adequate education to a child is roughly $10,500. So when the cost for a student with special needs, educating a student with special needs, exceeds four times foundation, so that would roughly be $42,000. All costs in excess of $42,000, those are rough numbers. The law says that 75% of reimbursable expenses above that threshold should be uh, given back to the schools in something called circuit breaker. That funding is subject to appropriation, although it's written at 75%. This year, I believe we're at 72%. And we start budgeting usually about at 65%. And you might be wondering why we show circuit breaker revenues increasing when I just said that we budget conservative to conservatively until the state gives us the actual reimbursement rate. Circuit breaker funding can be carried over. It's one of the grants that does not have to be spent all the way down because it is designed to help s schools manage unanticipated expenses. We were able to carry over circuit breaker, we're pred predicting rather that we will have circuit breaker carryover that we can apply to FY20. So even though we anticipate um, right now, we don't know what circuit breaker will be reimbursed at, and you will see <coughs> at the end of the line item summary that some of our expenses in special education at this point in time are expected to go down, so we wouldn't get as much circuit breaker. Remember, if it's, if it's for how much you're spending, if you're spending less, you get less circuit breaker, but we do anticipate carryover funds, so we have applied more circuit breaker. We're taking, uh, we're anticipating, we have applied for this grant, but we are anticipating a very big hit in one of our nursing and health grants. This grant has, uh, since I've been here, so for the past five years, and I believe initially started one year before I got here under Superintendent Boyer, this grant was almost, although it was competitive, it really almost functioned as an entitlement grant. Um, it was almost a given if you met certain criteria that you would receive funding, and we were allowed to use that funding to actually offset some salaries, which is unusual because typically grants require us to supplement, not supplant. In this case, we could use this grant for that. The new uh, notice of award indicated that the grant now had different, it's competitive and they're different priorities. So competitive priority is now given to urban schools, schools with high percentages of students who qualify as low income. And so we don't really meet a lot of the competitive priorities. We did apply, we are hopeful, but we are not planning that, that we would get that grant. So you see that's a decrease of roughly $52,000. Our Title I grant, that's a grant that is, uh, those are federal funds that are to assist with delivering evidence-based instruction in reading and or mathematics. And Title I allocations are driven by community wealth and low income populations. So the good news is that the state has determined that wealth has increased and uh, that's good. That's good for our residents and that's good for our students, but it also means that <coughs> we are anticipating a decrease in our title allotments for next year. The 240 grant is a grant that is federal funding. It comes through the Individuals with Disabilities Education uh, Act as amended, and um, that grant provides funding for us to uh, provide some special education services. It assists us with some of our out-of-district tuitions. It assists us with transportation. It also, by law, is money that we must set aside a certain amount of that money to provide for any special education needs of eligible students in private schools. Regardless of where those students live, any student attending a private school within our geographic boundaries, uh, they are considered an eligible student under 240, and we have to put aside what's called a proportionate share. So that is not 100% Hadley money. There's a share of that money that would go to um, students who are considered eligible in private schools or homeschool. Our school choice funding, uh, in we put more towards school choice last year. Uh, we've reduced that somewhat this year. And our best projection right now for FY20 of our fund balance in school choice, what we're 
predicting at the end rather of FY yeah of FY20. We're predicting a school choice balance that would be roughly around three hundred and forty thousand dollars. That school choice balance, the school committee has a policy around school choice. Um, that school choice balance also is designed to uh, assist us with unexpected expenses throughout the course of the school year. And typically, the ones that are most difficult for us to manage are any expenses that are associated with unforeseen uh, cost of special education, whether that's tuition or supports and resources. Is that where some of the money out of your school choices put, put into a <coughs> stabilization account? Well, we didn't move it to, we, it just stays in that school choice revolving, but that's how the school committee treats it. Okay. That estimate that I gave you about where we think we'll be at the end of FY20 mm -hmm. is, I think I've explained to you all before, when I do those projections for school choice, at this point in time, because school choice revenue is, is actual. So we can even have our school choice revenue can look like uh, 95.8 students, because it's actually the day they start and how long they're here. And what I do for the projection is simply graduate out all the school choice seniors. It's not a very good projection, because even this, we've already had additional school choice students show up in the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. But it's the best estimate that we kind of fine tune it, and every month the school committee gets an update on what is in school choice and, um, and where it's headed. Our pre-K revolving account, our pre-K revolving account currently, so our preschool is, um, it's a, people pay tuition for preschool. Some students do not have to, but many families do pay um, tuition for that. I think roughly right now the revolving account is probably at about 45,000 right now. Uh, we anticipate our revenues last year over the course of the year were roughly $125,000 and we're trending right now to look like we would be similar to that. So we're almost taking all of what we anticipate in revenues, maintaining a small prudent reserve that is solely for pre-K. So we don't ever, in revolving accounts, we wouldn't go into pre-K, take some of those funds and pay for something over here. That is truly a prudent reserve for pre-K. Mm -hmm. And we've applied what we estimate will be almost 100% of revenues for FY19 <coughs> to our FY20 budget. That small 262 grant operates somewhat like that 240 grant, but the same thing, it's for pre-K students, Eligible students, so students who are receiving special education services in pre-K, not just in Hadley Public Schools, but even private school eligible students within this geographic boundary, regardless of their district of residence. The big picture is that our total revenue projections are, we anticipate a decrease of roughly $81,000. That decrease is driven primarily by essentially a 10% decrease in projected decrease in grant funding. Um, so we are, we are very grateful for the town's uh, willingness to uh, provide us with, a, with a, an increase in local contribution that reflects, is, is commensurate with CPI, the uh, CPI rate of inflation. And, um, but I would point out also that um, our, the total revenues, which is local contribution plus total non-local revenues, is essentially what our expenses must be. At the end of the day, the budget will be balanced. And so you can see that the total operating budget will be less than will be less than 1.23% because that 1.23% increase assumes that I'm going to carry a budget deficit of $123,000, which obviously I'm not. So essentially you back you subtract that 123. Um, and so the total operating increase, although the local contribution increase, 2.6 total operating, will look more like something like 1% overall. The next part just goes through that these aren't final and they won't be final until the public hearing of the budget, which is at the end of April uh, with the school committee. But this gives you a general sense of uh, function subtotals is what we call them and what is increasing. The ones that, I will call your attention to those that have the most significant increases in them. Uh, so elementary and secondary teaching services at four, projected at 4.2%. Now, please know we have three retirements, we have three retirements. 
So we have no idea exactly what new hires will be, so that, that could be less. Uh, we also have a leave of absence scheduled for next year. We don't know what the replacement actual will be. As soon as we have those, they'll be in the budget, so that could change. Otherwise, if the staff remained exactly the same, what you're looking at is no increase in FTEs, but rather um, staff lanes and COLA. Um, the other large jump is, where's my 8.94? So paraprofessionals, similarly, although paraprofessionals, the comparison point when you're looking at FY19 is roughly this time last year. And our <coughs> paraprofessionals or educational support professionals are we, we didn't add any general FTEs, general program support. The only at FTE, a full-time equivalent, uh, the only additional personnel we've added would have been dictated by a student's individual education plan or a student plan. So we didn't, the changes in staffing are tied, the majority of our educational support professionals work in special education. Um, the other huge jump that you see is um, instructional services. Let's go to other instructional services. The largest jump in that, so that's an increase of roughly $31,000. That increase can primarily be contributed to services for students who are 18 to 22 years old, who for whom the district is still financially and programmatically responsible because they qualify under special education. Um, Can you just explain to sure. me, I know what virtual high school costs, it's something where they do, they don't have to go to school, but it's over the internet, so are we responsible for the virtual high school? So we pay, to, <coughs> we pay to have access to courses, <coughs> and the rate that we pay, that cost is roughly $24,000. What that allows us to do, and to get that rate, so that, what that rate means is that a student at Hopkins Academy, if we don't offer a course, and many of our students take advantage of this because we are a small school. We don't offer a course. They can take the course through virtual high school. There are students taking courses from all over the country. In order to get that rate to allow our students that level of access, we actually provide virtual high school with a teacher. So Ms. Nigella teaches a chemistry course that could have any, it may have, it wouldn't have any Hopkins students because she teaches chemistry face-to-face. -face. So if it's a, a course we offer that they can get face-to-face -face and it fits in their schedule, mm -hmm. they would take it with us. Mm -hmm. um, but so she's teaching children from all over the country and that allows us to get a discounted rate on virtual high school seats. That's how that works. Okay, thank you. Um, and there was another kind of transportation. Should I skip over transportation? Maybe yes, on the second page. Thank you. Transportation is another big one. Thank you, uh, Thank you. Yes, forty-three thousand dollars. So, um, we are we have done some adjustment on salaries to make sure that they reflect in FY20. Our projections are looking at actual kind of actual hours worked on average um, for our drivers in this fiscal year. But the the bulk of that is just opened uh, bids today for uh, our next three-year transportation contract. Um, so I was able to add that today and that was a pretty big job um, and on athletic services we are extremely grateful to our fire department because our chief and others uh, provide kind of on-site EMT when last year when they offered to do that we mistakenly backed the cost for trainers out of the budget they are not athletic trainers. I really was going to make Chief Spank me able do all kinds of things. <laughs> be a EMT and an athletic trainer. So we had to put them back in the budget because we do need trainers. Um, and we are paying them this year. We just, that was my error last year when I took them out. I have I a thought on that yeah. too. Can, uh, of course. I'll call and share it with you. Okay, I mean, perfect. Well, Cooley Dick pays for the athletic trainer at Northampton High School. Oh. So I didn't know if somehow we could, if we had the opportunity to contact somebody over uh, there. I'm all about that. All right. Yes. But I know that that athletic trainer over there, Elson, I think his great. daughter goes to our school here. Um, and actually, he works in Northampton. Great. So I know that Cooley Dick has been paying for years for their athletic trainer. Fantastic. 
right. so I don't know how sure that works. I will follow up. With, I will follow up. And I that's can. That's great. I know Dr. Fallon's not working tomorrow, but I can follow up more with information that would for be you great. also. As I am digging for a pen and can't seem to find one. Okay. We've got a lot of things in here. Ice cream, mint, whatever. <laughs> Just not a pen. I'll take the ice cream. <laughs> so, anyway. On the um, yes. heating of buildings line, I see the note about the heating oil prices uh, being kind of high, so not locked in. Yeah. Uh, my understanding is that we have a contracted amount left over from the senior center, possibly. Uh, the, the, the old senior center. Um, do you know how much or if that could be redirected toward the school since it's already been locked in at, a, I'm sure, a lower rate than... They're going to have to take that tank out. I don't know how full it is, yeah. 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 Well, there's yeah. The oil in that tank. Yeah, we'll right. have to... I'll get with Chris and we'll, we'll talk about that and how that might work. And hopefully, we haven't locked in yet because we just, the prices are too high. Yeah. I just know we've already paid for it and took yeah. delivery of some stuff that's sitting there can't be used. So. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And then right now, right now, on our tuition line for non-public schools, if nothing changed in our census, in our student count, student placement, or individual ed plans, there would be a significant <coughs> reduction there. And um, so... <coughs> this, um, no, so I, I so once the, the change in expenses, I'm going to correct something I said before, the change in expenses as budgeted right now would have been a 2.7, but it will, it will be a 1.23 because of local contribution, which again, is, is, we're grateful for that, but we will make the reduction of the one, the essentially $123,000. So the budget will be balanced by the end of the month. So the total increase will be, uh, we project it to be an increase to total operating of 1.23% for the budget with a very generous 2.6 increase in both. Uh, and again, those notes, just let you know, are unknowns. Heating oil, we haven't locked in. Special education, tuition, and transportation, as I said, if nothing changed for students, we know exactly what it would be, but that's rarely the case. And our salaries for, I said we have three retirees, one leave of absence. Three retirees, one leave of absence. So when those numbers are final, that will change the bottom line. Have, have the reimbursements from the state included at all? I know we were talking about that earlier in the year uh, as far as charter school reimbursement or school choice reimbursement. No, so um, that's interesting. So not nothing has changed in terms of Chapter 46. And every single year it's subject to appropriation. And those actually are revenues that go on the town side. And to my knowledge, they're not being fully funded this year either. They're I not. They've never been fully funded. Yeah, but. they're not even um, and I, I believe that the governor's recommendation, the governor's, so you know there's a lot of discussion right now about uh, the foundation budget and redoing the foundation budget. Um, part of what the governor presented was what he thinks we should, he's recommending for changes to the foundation budget. And it is my understanding that he's recommended some changes to charter tuition reimbursement. And I don't know that those have been accepted, that those have been met favorably across municipalities. Um, it doesn't, there are many, many districts that have said to me they don't think it will, it will be good for their towns, but that's just a recommendation. And there's still a lot of work to do on both what I believe they're calling the Promise Act, the Foundation Change of Promise Act, and of course with the budget at the state level. So that was a whole lot of information. So no. <laughs> so no on that. <laughs> no on that. Yeah. That was a whole, yeah, no on charter, no on changes to chapter 46. It's not being funded. It's not being fully funded. Okay. Yeah. It's special ed is uh, age out thing, similar to the retirees or something like so that. So the, the town, through the district, is responsible for students who until who qualify for special education until they get a diploma or <laughs> until they turn <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Someone yeah. could be aging out, so you don't have that. So our budget, we know that. The, oh, the okay. part that we don't know, if if they're with us right now, we would know that. What we don't know is around move-ins or change in need. That's what we can't always predict. Until the age of 22? Until the, yeah. unless, or unless they graduate. So it's not every, it's not guaranteed until the age of 22. And are these um, students part of Hampshire Educational Collaborative also? 
Sometimes. Sometimes. Some of our tuitions are for collaborative programs. Not all, but some of them are. We do use those programs. On the transportation, are you guys still have to discuss what the option is that you're going to choose I with the so school committee? I said that. Yes. Okay. And we are encouraging <laughs> community member parents to come to the school committee on April 2nd. Uh, we disseminated surveys to parents of Hadley Public School children, the faculty at Hopkins Academy, and to the students at Hopkins Academy, asking them their thoughts on uh, making a later start time for Hopkins Academy by roughly an hour, but in order to do that, to get them essentially on the same schedule, just about the same schedule, it would require doing something called a single tier of busing, meaning all kids are on the bus together. And so we've asked folks to weigh in on their thoughts on a later start time and also their thoughts on a single tier. The school committee can see that data live. They'll be discussing it. They'd like people to come to the April 2nd meeting to talk about whether or not this is a good idea. And if you can't make it to that meeting, the school committee's email addresses are on our district website and you can email them your thoughts directly. And it's uh, probably 5.30 over 530 at Hopkins? in the Hopkins Cafe. Is there a savings figure on it, roughly? Well, my savings projections, that wasn't the primary reason we recommended it. At first, we thought potentially there would be a savings for um, a reduction if we maintain some of the routes as we do now and we outsource for some of our routes. We assumed that we would experience savings um, minimally in terms of the cost for our own employees. <coughs> But what we found when we opened the bus bid was actually that um, the single tier was higher than the, the two tier. So the primary motivation was because some parents had been asking about making a later start time at Hopkins. So really the focus was yeah, around the late start time and to get to the late start time without <coughs> incurring what we assume, incurring additional costs or needing to open up contracts for impact bargaining, we'd have to go to a single tier of busing. Okay. I really need to talk to those parents. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm more than happy to have some words because... And then the other thing, though, the, <laughs> the issue of um, transportation that we share with Amherst and Northampton to have our VOC students mm -hmm. go over to Northampton, that would also change. Because then we would be responsible for their transportation and instead of joining in with Amherst at a certain start time, mm -hmm. um, the students would have to have the responsibility of getting to Hopkins to catch the bus to go to Northampton to go to Smith Boat. Right. So what would we be saving? Not sure. Unless all of a sudden Amherst and Northampton are going to jump on the bandwagon, and I'm not sure. I haven't heard that from No, uh, we would, if from them. Hadley went in that direction, Hadley would really be kind of leaving the charge and later start time in this region. There are other schools that are looking at it. it. A lot of schools out east have done this. Often when they do this, they just flip flop the start time for elementary and high school. So they, they have elementary start earlier and high school start later. Now what would be the point of that? <laughs> I'm on April 2nd. I'm, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just curious, is there um, support for doing that amongst uh, the teachers and the staff, or was it just a parent-driven thing, or what, a little bit of both? Or? For the later start yes. time? Yeah. So the staff survey, there's interest very much, the staff at Hopkins, the majority of them think it's a good idea. Um, and because the proposal didn't it affect had the staff at all, they weren't surveyed. It was just the Hopkins staff. If you're asking, do they have support for the flip flop? I didn't even ask that yeah. question. Yeah, I didn't even ask that question. We didn't. We weren't entertained. There was a lot to entertain with sports and everything else after school activities. And mm -hmm. you know. I, I, I feel that you have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just say it publicly. Take their iPhones and iPads away from them at a decent time so they can go to bed and get some sleep. <laughs> Perhaps I'll send you some learned I, articles. No, I have, I have read, I have <laughs> looked, experts. I have read learned articles. <laughs> Believe me, I have read them. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Uh, I thought it was going to be a big cost savings with uh, transportation. It, it was, and it get, I le really want to underscore that that wasn't the primary motivation, but we made that assumption as well, just yeah. logically as though it would, but we were rather surprised by the bid that it wasn't. Yeah. 
I'll win that one with my colleague. American Pediatric Association. Oh. I still do more. <laughs> End of discussion. That doesn't mean they're right. Does it? No. So thank you very much for paying attention. Thank you thank very you. much for coming and sharing with us, and mm -hmm. I'm sure we will have more discussion before the Absolutely. final final go. Yes, mm -hmm. and when the uh, when it's finalized and in our in our book, then I will make sure that you all have access to those final numbers that go before the school committee for public hearing. But we are clear what local contribution is, so we would just make sure you had accurate numbers, but mm -hmm. there's no other ask. So th thank you for your support and your generosity. We really appreciate it. Thank I, you. I just have one other question. The uh, resource officer right here that you have listed, is that the one that the, the police, is that addition, an additional to what the police send over? No. no or no, do we send transfer. that? Yeah. So that to the public safety. Correct. We, that goes to the public safety. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Thank you. All right, so we will move into public works budget. Take us through your budget, highway. Good evening, Sharon. Also, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, Madam. <coughs> Good evening, Madam Chair. Well, thank you very much for having us. We're here to discuss our FY20 <coughs> budget. Before we begin, Madam Chair, I'd like to please uh, allow me to use this opportunity once again to thank uh, Sharon and uh, Billy Kelly. They, they, they've done a very good job, and they were very helpful in my transition. Um, as you know, the budget process was already in place mm -hmm. at the time of my employment, mm -hmm. and they've been very helpful. I just want to put that on record. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Did they find you any more money, or? They, 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 <laughs> yeah, Madam Chair, we the um, public works budget, especially the highway division, um, for lack of a better word, level funded. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, our responsibilities are huge, and um, we know we understand that the town will not necessarily be able to give us 100% of what we're looking for at the particular time, but. With my coming in and um, with the short time of my assessment of what we need to do in order to begin a process, we we, gener we didn't add much to the budget. Uh, the CBA collective bargaining agreement uh, was more or less what uh, took some of the addition. We, for example, we saw the the budget for sick sick time bonus, the budget for um, longevity. But where we added some money, or we are asking for some money, has to do with infrastructure. Um, in general, we, we've we looked at the town infrastructure. Are you agree with us, Madam Chair, that uh, we need to do more work? The roads, the culverts, mm -hmm. the uh, drainage system, and also signage, mm -hmm. uh, sidewalks. So we, we have a lot of things on our plate. But so we want to start beginning, giving the opportunity to want to start doing something whereby we can begin to minimize the risk that the town is exposed to due to lack of uh, infrastructure proper maintenance. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of uh, additions. We have safety improvement. We added some 9,000, which was, um, we also had increase in police details. The more we tend to, the more we do projects, 
the more we uh, uh, safety is important and so we also want to account for the detail police details so we because of the increase in what we are doing we also uh, and because of past experience in our budget we find that we've always come out deficit in police details so this year we're asking for for increase we also to enhance our efficiency we uh, we have put in place or we've actually researched in place as a good software for our work order system and uh, the good news about it is that is the we are recommending three the three divisions to share the cost highway sewer and water and in this uh, software we are able to catalog all that we have to do we are able to catalog what we have done the cost uh, equipment uh, we also it gives us a good um, assessment of cost and our overall function it also gives us uh, in terms of employees accountability on each project so we 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 buy, the highway has 2500 of that cost because of the highway will be f using basically 50 percent of the software it covers both roads snow building maintenance and and such so Storm it was water. a, it was a five thousand dollar increase correct and the software is it lic yes Yes. Yes. Twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. Twenty five. Yeah. So the total for two twenty would be five thousand. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, and then uh, we also have uh, increase in in uh, safety of barrels. Um, it's one of those things that will that line will continue to will continue to hopefully increase that line more because we found out that in in the course of our function and minor emergencies. We, as a DPW, we didn't have enough uh, safety barrels or what we may call horses. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very grateful to the police. The police was very helpful in recent time we had issues. And so we, are, so we want to uh, um, add to what, uh, what we have. So that's why we have that increase of, uh, for safety barrels. Is we that also the supply line, Chris? I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, that's supply, supply line. Yeah, that's yes. And in our training for OSHA safety, that, uh, that's also a big one for us, in part because uh, of um, the Department of Labor also came to, to us just a few, few weeks or a few months before my arrival. Mm -hmm. And so we are trying to be in compliance. It, it also, in terms of uh, highway, we... And they haven't even been through, uh, they haven't come for the scheduled... Uh, inspection for the water or, or the rest of the wastewater so mm -hmm. we don't really know what kind of costs we're going to incur you know once they come and, and make their recommendations for stuff that needs to be fixed right away like the guards we have put in so mm -hmm. yeah I, I've, 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 I've got in touch with Maya I'm going to see if Maya can come in to do audit for us mm -hmm. when if mm -hmm. we if we are proactive mm -hmm. my experience is that the Department of Labor tend to work with us so and Maya will be able to help us exactly what he's saying to come in and look at various divisions mm -hmm. and same uh, thing with Bay State Roads yeah. had some programs at one time through UMass but I don't know if they were doing anything with them or not you know. and the Bay State Road may, would, may come in to train us they may also uh, we may not necessarily be able to get it free as 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 opposed to Maya Mm -hmm. yeah. Maya, uh, so but this period we come into do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also have um, the issue of uh, 1500 uh, or 2000 that was added to. I'm sorry, uh, let me finish highway before I go to sewer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the issue of snow, we, we are running deficit because we, as, as you can see, we, ha we, we had a um, a very tough winter not necessarily in terms of amount of snow mm -hmm. but due to slit ice the frequency and every time we have ice slit we tend to spend more 
as opposed to regular snow mm -hmm. because of safety. So we are frequently out there with salt. We are frequently out there with, uh, with staff, um, labor cost, equipment cost, material cost. So, so we currently, as, as at uh, our current receipt, we are ne negative in terms of about 6,000 plus which for this, for this uh, budget yeah. and so that we also reflect on our um, FY20. But you're going to keep the road treatments at a hundred thousand then? So yes we would like to keep it that change. number. Yeah, yes. yeah, because Be because of uh, the formula. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. And you get deficits back. Yeah, and, uh, that's, that's the line will count so uh, deficit spending. Mm -hmm in part because it's an emergency line and there's no way for us to quantify mm -hmm. how the emergency will look like. Okay. Street lights? S street lights, we, uh, we, the town administrator actually uh, spent more on that line for now. <laughs> uh, we, but uh, we are working on getting uh, some recommendations from Eversource. Mm -hmm. um, Selectman Phil has ad advised us to look at the possibility of all the street lights in town, mm -hmm. the cost, and also the f if it's feasible to begin changing them to LED. Mm -hmm. And even if, as a town, if we decide to manage 100%, if the cost will be less on the long run as opposed to uh, current formula. Mm -hmm. So I have started the research. <coughs> And um, I will be presenting the board in this very near future, my okay. findings. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Building maintenance? Yeah, building maintenance is, uh, is very, we're very busy right now because of different activities. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, if you look at, we have some numbers there which we've added. Uh, but uh, the town administrator has also taken some numbers up, <laughs> in part because of the move of the senior, the senior center. Mm -hmm. uh, he he has he has taken uh, the twelve thousand five hundred. But we are of the opinion that if we can get that money, uh, it will enhance the town hall security, because my finding is that uh, we don't have, in my view, a, a good security in town hall. And uh, so if the select board can give us that money back, it will help us to have, have asked uh, Gary, the building maintenance staff, to research what it would take to put a minimum security here, even if it's fab, as opposed to where everybody has, we cannot guarantee who, how many people who has the locks to to the town. We have no idea. And it's not yes. So, so, so that's one of the things if that we, we do. Yeah. Similar to we did the uh, yeah. uh, highway and uh, sewer department Correct. with your three-digit or four-digit yeah. digit social security number or license oh. number, yes. and you know exactly who's who, coming. Who, who coming with a five? Yeah. Yes. There, there's no questions about. It. How so much would have to be put back in? We are looking for twenty thousand dollars, but we ha yes, but we have this twelve thousand five hundred. We think that it can be a good start because only one vendor has given us a quote. The vendor that we use for the public safety complex, for that, it just for budgetary. Uh, I, rem I requested for that before, just for if we if we are given the approval, we will actually go out to be. It's possible that he may still be the same low bit, but for now, we just need a number to come before the board, and because he has done something for for us. We just asked him to give us a rough budget number, so he he thinks he we have about twenty thousand. And uh, you you spoke to the fire chief, right? Because he wanted all of them the same for, yeah. for maintenance. And yeah, one of the ongoing issues is individual locks for individual offices that people don't have access to. Um, <coughs> maybe something that could be fa phased in, you know, one floor at a time, but without going into super detail on the security that, that we're adding. <laughs> Would, right. would that be more of a capital line item as opposed to a budget line item? Uh, because because of the number, could it, it could be, we could transfer it to capital. Mm -hmm. okay, yes, but, but we, we well, felt when we 
it's for this 12,500. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it was to, to come and afford to us. But we felt that if we can get this 1,200 that we, is in the budget, or if, if the board can even use this opportunity to discuss it before the board, instead of waiting to come in the fall, mm -hmm. that's why we, that's how we came to this. Sooner rather than later yeah. after we've seen the way it's working, yes. yeah. the existing ones now. Yeah. <coughs> and just as an aside, there is an increase in like some of the custodial stuff, but that's more reflective of what actually is the cost because we were under budget for custodial things in the past. Cemetery? Um, Take that one or you want Chair, I would like uh, to uh, reserve cemetery to the last one? because cemetery and uh, my uh, request for DPW reorganization, uh, we kind of come together if the if the chair allows me. Okay. So you want to go with uh, sewer? Sewer, yes. fine. Wastewater. Yes. We have uh, again in the sewer the administrative salaries all are based on um, the CBA agreements and uh, so in, uh, but in terms of the cost of doing business we generally is flat except uh, we have uh, in the vehicle repairs maintenance and also in the um, heating line item. Uh, the town administrator has uh, reduced our budget for about five thousand, uh, but we would like to see if for some if the board can give us half of that back because we the, we cannot guarantee <coughs> much of how the next coal season will look like. Uh, but we understand the issue of uh, vehicle maintenance in part because the town has been very gracious to us. We have uh, rel relatively new vehicles. And so less maintenance. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we the in, other increases are basi basically. Um, sorry. Mm -hmm. it, it, basically, the uh, collective bargaining salaries mm -hmm. increase. Yes. Mm -hmm. the water. water. Water enterprise on the water. Yes. We also have, uh, in terms of our water, um, the same um, issues, but we have, uh, in terms of water building systems, uh, we have 5,000 that have been taken out. We also have 5,000 that have been taken out from uh, water and vehicle repairs. We are asking that uh, the board gives us at least half of that 10,000, in part because of the building again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we. The, uh, the water, the, 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 the water building, the treatment, the temperature and the ambient air and the con setting conditions, uh, maintenance is expensive. So we, so, but in terms of the vehicles, again, we are grateful to the town. The town has given us uh, good vehicles. We have relatively good. So I can, we can understand in terms of the maintenance costs, but we will appreciate if we can get back the 5,000 for the buildings. Okay. We also have um, the uh, training is uh, uh, is very important safety standard with the OSHA, which we just talked earlier. The sentence. So we have s we also have some increase. Mm -hmm. and, What's the and then we have two thousand plus, which uh, may be going to the new software Veda. Of which um, I will leave that to Sharon to speak on that. Yeah, they're going to switch to data. It might be a bigger cost, but it's also for the work order system. Yes. It's for what? Yeah, our computer systems that just to pay for that for the next year. What's the water medical I, uh, line item for? What's that? Um, that's uh, going yes. for um, exams okay. and things like that. Okay, um, drug testing. Okay. Right. Um, oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's required. Uh, CDL. CDL. Federal yeah. motor carrier requires us to. Yeah. Yeah. 
I always thought people should pay for their own. Is what I always thought. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, because the condition for the condition for employment, it might be contract. Yeah, it's contract. And then this the contract also the CBA requires that. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yes. We used to pay for. But if, if you were to if you were to leave here with your CDL, it would be yours, and it would be your responsibility to uh, yes. your you know your. Mm. So, Madam Chair, I'm coming to cemetery. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to a little bit. I, the town meeting um, voted that DPW should be in charge of the mm -hmm. day to day cemetery operations. Yeah. And so, also, part of my looking at DPW when I came on board and I, and I saw the flow of how things are being done, I find that, and then with this addition of cemetery trust, so I proposed, which manager you got my letter of, and also the chat, how I think the board should take a look. But I want to begin with the cemetery. Currently, the cemetery is being managed um, by the cemetery commission. And then, um, having sat down with the chair of the Cemetery <coughs> Committee and also the town administrator. I've also spoken to the DPW liaison, the selectman Phil. Um, our judgment, Mr. Madam Chair, is that uh, the way it is being run has to change to be able to present, to do not only legally but also to do it the right up the right way. Uh, currently, we have two individuals who manage the cemeteries. Um, they are managed as contractors. Also, one of those individuals is also an employee of Public Works. Uh, so, so, my recommendation to, if you look at our cost, it says $18,000. We've already spent $10,000 out of that $18,000. And the $18,000 is not a good, no, is, it doesn't reflect the way it should be managed. So we are recommending to the, to, the, to the board to combine the building maintenance and cemetery as a division mm -hmm. and uh, to give us a foreman to run that division mm -hmm. and also to give us, we are recommending two options to the board depending on which option the board wants to use. The first option is for the board to give us a skilled labor who will work with the foreman and to maintain the cemetery to also uh, dig grave when it's necessary the daily management of the cemetery will be done both with this uh, division and also the administration of public works uh, the public will interact with public works the funeral homes will interact with public works and uh, we also uh, propose a couple of rates, which uh, we also present to the board. Mm -hmm. Depending on how, whatever the board approves, that will become where we, our, I will begin. Now, the current arrangement, in my view, Madam Chair, it doesn't meet the requirement of the town, where we, the two individuals who are, who are um, the contractors, uh, to my, um, they don't have the correct insurance, we also don't have, they don't have the, the we cannot defend, in my view, uh, a public employee who is also getting paid with public money. We also, uh, he's also a contractor. Now, uh, so, so the, the recommendation is that current arrangement ends at June 30th, and the, we, as we're discussing the FY20, the board will make a decision either to give us that skilled labor or the board may recommend that we go out to contract out the mowing and maintenance of the cemetery. But if that contract will be managed by the new foreman who is in charge of building maintenance and cemetery. And also that contractor will meet all the legal requirements of the town, including the liability, liability insurance, the workman comp insurance, and the ability to meet um, all the other requirements that uh, both the town and the commonwealth requires. So that this way, we will not need two, two contractors to manage the cemetery. 
we will have a one contract. And um, then our contractor now we deal with his or her personnel to make sure that they meet the requirement. So, but so these are the two options we are bringing before. But in terms of dollars numbers, we do not come in with any number because we are waiting for the board to give us a guidance what the board wants to do. Uh, we have salary for foreman based on the collective bargaining and the salary structure of the town. Mm -hmm. So if the board decides to create that position, we have we will recommend some salary structure based on what we have right on the ground, including <coughs> skill levels. But in terms of budget wise, we are uh, the 18,000 uh, we have right now, as much as it is looking good, it does not meet the requirement, Anjir, in part because of the way it's been handled. Also, the rates for buying a grave lot for barrier also has to change. We submitted a proposal, and based on our research, we went around the surrounding towns, Northampton, um, Deerfield, um, Amherst, and uh, South Hadley. So we and the, all all of these towns except South Hadley has a public cemetery, and their rates are relatively uniform to what we are proposing. We've also spoken with the cemetery commission a chair, and um, I'm sorry he's also here today. And I, I'm sure he has, may have one or two things to address to the board. But so these are our proposal to to be able to get a good budget for the cemetery. I would think with these. Uh, there will be a good smooth run of the cemetery. People will not have to call us and then and they don't get anybody. There's somebody at DPW to do the paperwork. The town clerk is here during the day and all the legal documents are probably done. Yes. So right now we have um, River Drive Pinesnes, <coughs> they do the digging, correct? Carl's yeah. Carl's, Carl's, yes. yes. Um, <coughs> So would you still use them? Or are you proposing that you would, we would be the digger? digger. Yeah, well, if we set up the division, we will be the digger. But Carl can be a back, a backup, a back, we can use him as a plan B, whereby for some reason we have an emergency and we don't have our guy. Because for example, the foreman is required to have a CDL and uh, we'll be able to dig the grave. This way, if we, make, if we bring Carl to the picture, then we have to sign a legal documents with Carl to be the point every time we have to bring him to dig a grave, of which we can do ourselves. Yes. So one of the, the goals, and I'll, I'll let Alan talk about this, but is to kind of streamline everything and kind of bring it into yes. a more formal arrangement. And um, one of the thoughts is that if we're doing our own digging for the most part, yes then the people that are paying the fees are paying them directly to the town clerk, yes. running the, the money through the cemetery uh, fund bank account, which we, if we can combine them all, because we have numerous, how many do we have? We have several, right? Yes. Different cemetery, um, combine them into one account to, so that way it's easier to keep track of. And then if we have to call Carl's or somebody else to fill in, then the money would still go through the town clerk and then we could pay the contractor so that's the responsibility of the town clerk? Well, oh. just collecting fees as far as... Uh, but it's yet there, are, there are different accounts that this money goes to. And would, and would it be the collector? The, no, well, it would be the town clerk. Yeah, the, the town clerk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we have different accounts, mm -hmm. which for another account, a perpetual care account, some money will be set aside to manage the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Some money will, will not be touched except through the select board and the town meeting. And, and so it looks more, uh, for lack of a better word, it's like another enterprise, but there are different ways to manage this account. Mm -hmm. But if, we, if the board consolidate this, then the current accounts that we have, which are many, will be, the board can consolidate it to two or three set of accounts. And then we, we see if the money is enough, which I will yield to the chairman to speak, how to, to, pay, to uh, pay for some of the cost for the employees because the general, the general fund also contributes some of the fund. And then we begin the process of now putting a professional outlook into that division and, and improve customer service. Customer service, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Can I just, um, Linda, these different cemetery funds, mm -hmm. are they trusts or are they, they they're, yes, no. they are, they are managed, they're held and managed as trusts. Uh, so does so the trust so language allow for a consolidation? Uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've been researching that for years. <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, a point of clarification, there's actually two sources of money to support the cemetery operations, the trust funds and the annual appropriation, right. which was set up several years ago because the trust, originally I guess you could say that the trust funds were for maintenance of the cemeteries because that's what you know, perpetual care does include that, but the, there's not enough money in those trust funds to do that work. So the town several years ago said, okay, we'll just, we'll give you it's around twenty thousand dollars an hour. He has annual appropriation, and that's that's what we use to pay the caretakers, the mowers. The trust funds are used for everything else, and then the um, uh, the, the the rates or the fees for doing internments. And I'm not quite sure exactly how it works. They might go through the revolving fund, mm -hmm. and then and it's yeah, paid and out. Paid out it's paid out well, not to the contractor, to to the the town employee who does it. Oh, okay. Okay. It could be a contractor, but it happens to be a town employee yes, who does right. it. Okay. And that's why that's one of the things that this new position would kind of uh, rationalize a little bit better and make it more um, sensible um, instead of having a, one person being paid out of three different pots, he gets a salary, and then these monies are used to go into the DPW budget to, you know, in part to support his salary. But um, again, there's two. There's the town appropriation for mowing and maintenance, and then there's the trust funds. Mm -hmm. Now, the trust funds are the receipt of from sales of lots, professional care, and it's the interest over the years that we can use. Right. We can't use the principal. There's about 60 grand in there now, I think, for the nine funds. The nine funds include five cemeteries, the sale of lots, which is a separate fund, and the three named trust funds. I think it's a Boyd, um, a Howe, and Gaylord, I think. We, we found the letter setting up the Howe one, and that basically is a perpetual care for old Hadley, okay? So it's just like the other funds. It doesn't have any specific restrictions except it's old Hadley. We have no idea what the other two are, um, and there's not a lot of money in those two. We can, we'll figure out some way of, you know, respecting that um, or, or solving it, but uh, it's, it's only a few thousand dollars. So, I hope that clarifies what we're talking about. Uh, well, actually, my, we actually should also add, we definitely, we've had conversations, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we are, and I know we are on the same page and in, in agreement on the overall direction of what's happening here, and that's in accordance with, uh, you know, the town meeting, uh, which we were pushing because it's cl been clear that the day-to-day -day operations have to be in DPW. That's the only way the cemeteries can be operated over time and without um, uh, relying on, because what happens with the cemetery committee isn't active, which has happened, and there's no chairman. That's happened. And then, uh, you know, it took, things kind of fall off the table. So we want to prevent that. We want to have continuity. We want to have professionalism. We want to have uh, consistency, and we want it to all be legal. Um, and um, I think um, you know, the suggestions that Chris is putting forward, for the most part, the cemetery committee we discussed this last night, and we're we're fine with pretty much everything. Um, I, we see our role now as we're going to assist and advise. <coughs> the, the CPWs in the, in the drive, they make the call. Now, if they want us to do something like selling lots or doing uh, Community Preservation Act projects or uh, even, you know, do, soliciting bids for tree work or whatever they need, doing record keeping, all the stuff we've been doing in the past, we'd be happy to continue. But on the other hand, if you have somebody who's doing it full time and they say, hey, we've got this, don't worry about it, that's fine too. So however it works, as long as there's two criteria. One is that there's to be a commitment from the town to take care of the cemeteries, which I think there's no question that that's happening. Uh, it has to, you know, would preferably be the most economical way of doing business. And, and the third thing is, we've got to do it in accordance with procurement requirements. And I don't know that we have been, 
all the time doing it that way, especially with the caretakers. Um, I, the one thing that I think that we, we, we would recommend, the committee would recommend, whether, uh, again, against Chris's call, but the idea of how you um, procure um, um, services for the caretakers, it doesn't necessarily, I think, we, we think, it doesn't necessarily have to be one bidder for all cemeteries. We, we, you know, it might be, it might be the best way. But the, the, we, have it, we have it divided into two groups, the three older cemeteries and the largest ones, North Hadley, Hockenham, and, and um, Old Hadley, um, it, one contract it does right now, and the other two, Russellville and Plainville, another one. And that, and that only costs us right now, it's $5,000 for the, those two cemeteries. They're the smallest and they're very easy to take care of. You could, I mean, the town could do, could do it. I don't think the town could do the other uh, cemeteries um, with the equipment costs and the labor costs, but they might still be able to do Plainville and Russell. It might turn out that that's an economical way. I'm not, we don't particularly care, but I think we should look at it. Um, and um, as the town doing it, or, or doing it as a separate contract, because you might get a, a, a you might have more options about who you get, and you might, and if it's only five thousand or six thousand dollars, you might not have to go out to bid. You can just get a quote. Okay, for that, for those two cemeteries. The other three, it's going to be more than $10,000. There's and more than three. What about Hockenham? Wh what's that? You didn't say Hockenham. Uh, yeah, Hockenham, Old Hadley, and North Hadley are the three okay. ones that right now are done by one care caretaker. And um, if you did, if you put those out to bid, it's going to be more than $10,000. And I'm afraid it's going to be more than the $12,000 that we budget for it now. Yes. But we just don't know. Okay. So, Marichia, hey, I'm sorry. Good. Yeah. Marichia, the the numbers that the chair might just alluded to, they are good for now. Yeah. But they are good for now because they 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 do not meet the procurement requirements. Exactly. And so I would recommend that the board, uh, in the course of realigning the cemetery, the board will spend more money, but we have to do it right the right way. And any vendor that we get must carry liability insurance. The town has, it, has to be protected. Mm -hmm. uh, must carry um, workman comp insurance. Uh, but right now, the two vendors we have right now, right. none of them carry this. So, right. and so, and so, and so the town is not protected mm -hmm. in the least. Mm -hmm. So to get the fees out of the way, do you have, have any issue with the, the you know, fees? As far as cons well, the suggestion is let's consolidate all the fees into one cemetery trust fund. Right. And, um, and I think, I think that that makes sense, if we can do it. I mean, as long as the treasurer is okay with it, I don't see why we don't. And we've, in the past, we've used monies from different trust funds for like one project, especially for community preservation, things that benefit all the cemeteries. Um, and it was just from an accounting point of view and, a, and a, you know, keeping the accounts straight and doing the paperwork, I think it makes a lot, a lot of sense. Um, the, the only thing is, the only cautionary is that was the cemetery committee doesn't want to see that money disappear sure. into the ether, or <laughs> back into the general budget. It should be, it's got to be for cemetery purposes. Right. And um, So more or less a revolving account for cemeteries uh, is, is what it should be. Yeah, yeah so I guess. Correct, I, Linda? Yeah. Uh, I'm say? Sure. Are, are, are you talking about taking the current balances and putting them into a single account, but you're just talking about going forward taking <coughs> the fees and putting them into a single account? Well. I'm not sure where the fees actually go. Do they go. They don't go into. I don't think they go into the trust fund. Well, for sale of the lots, they do. Sa oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. The sale of lots, yes, and that is a trust fund. Yes. So we. Right, and they'll go to a particular fund. Uh, so if you buy it in Plainville, that's the fund that it goes to. So I don't know. Uh, are you, are you sure? Yes. Sale of lots is pre. Is well, a lot we can of money. Well, fund for all the cemeteries. Half yeah. it's split. So if someone's paying three hundred dollars, one hundred fifty is going into the line that says sale of lots, and yes. one hundred fifty goes to the particular cemetery. The perpetual okay, fund. So that's cemetery. the perpetual fund. Yeah. Right, but that yeah. it's all part of the same sale. Yes. Right, right. When right. someone right. buys a lot, that they have to, they do both. Yeah, but you get two checks: one for perpetual care, one for sale of lots. Right. So the sale of lots, the two hundred dollars we get for that goes into the sale of lots fund. All right. it's not which is also fund. we consider a trust fund. I mean, yes, it is. It's a trust fund. Yes. So that's fine. That's the way it should be. So, so what, could, could, could we just kind of think about 
where do we want to go with this? I mean, we yeah. can determine the fees and things like that already. So, yeah. do you, you want to make? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. To, to, <laughs> to approve. Reading my mind. Thank <laughs> you very much. To approve these proposed, uh, the new fee structure and mm -hmm. those line items. Such but as I think we have to make a motion first to approve the restructuring of the cemetery committee okay. and saying if it's going to be going under. I'm looking for a motion to put it under the DPW. No, uh, uh, no it is under the DPW. Because in town meeting do that? Yeah, town, town meeting did that. Did, but I think that we need did. to. Yeah. No, but but it's the board has, to, but the board has to give us, authorize us with the division we're looking for. Yeah. The right. building maintenance yeah. and cemetery to be yeah, to one division. To accept your proposed reorganization. Yeah, right. Correct. Right. You, you want to do that? Well, I was just looking at it as two separate items. What, one, one, the fees. Yes, we want to increase the fees, Correct. and that's. I, I think we it's can do that because we set the fees mm -hmm. now, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So then I'll, I'll make a motion to accept these proposed fees, and then um, I don't. I don't know how to word the restructuring motion. I'll let somebody else do that. So. Okay. Well, I'll second well, your fee ahead. motion. All right. Any other for further discussion on the fees? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then I'll make a motion to accept uh, the DPW director's proposed staffing and reorganization as presented in our material this evening. I just have a question, one more question on that. Okay, just second. 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 okay, I guess I can second that, but I do have a question. <laughs> um, and I didn't want to, well, we'll see. But um, my question is, is for building maintenance and cemetery, we have two town committees for both those functions right now. How do they fall into this structure? Like, where do they lie? How do they feed into the DPW making decisions? The the cemetery commission mm -hmm. is an oversight. We DPW will be reporting to the chairman uh, of as we report to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, DPW the board the chairman if there are uh, decisions to be made policy wise. Uh, the, the cemetery commission and the select board makes their decision. DPW would only recommend and bring it forth. So it will not affect the the board. The board still has oversight. Just like we did just yeah. right now. Yes, no, it right comes now. back to this Correct. board for all decisions. That's mm. true, but I'm just thinking the, how they make the, recommendations. The municipal building committee yeah. uh, has never been, we have never been under their jurisdiction. Right. We report directly to the select board. Now, mm -hmm. the unit, so the building maintenance staff we have right now works under the select board through the public works. Right? Mm -hmm. So the building uh, committee still stands, in my view, I, I will assume it reports to the select board or the town administrator. Is yeah. that the, ch the chain of command yeah. is Chris, yeah. the foreman. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The foreman does have certain duties in his job. Yeah. Some of it's building maintenance, some of it's cemetery, cemetery yes. some of it's grounds. Yeah. The board, us, the cemetery commission, I think the municipal building thing works the same way. We can study things, we can make kick things yes. around, we make recommendations, yeah. we can yeah. scream and yell, yes. but, <laughs> but, yes. but, you know, it's, it has to be a cooperative, obviously, Correct. none of this is going to work without cooperation and collaboration, yeah. which we've had and, and we're totally Correct. happy with. It. The public works doesn't make policy, it's the board that makes policy, yeah. so we just, we just said this. Okay. So basically, the municipal building committee and the cemetery are advisory in nature. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Decision making. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what we're. Yeah. I mean, we. And he, I mean, of course, he, Chris could delegate something to us. Uh, if if you know if, he doesn't, if they don't have enough time. Historically, we've done. We've handled sales of lots. We've handled some of the record keeping, and we're happy to keep. And the CPA project proposals. Happy to keep doing that if he wants to. But if he wants, he wants to do it. That's fine too. Yeah. We we we'll engage. We we'll engage the. The chairman and the committee yeah, on lobbying, yeah. maybe it's the select board for some funds. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's always good to have volunteers for That's something right. that are willing <laughs> to do yeah. something, so <laughs> don't ever turn them away. Thank you very much. <laughs> we're more than grateful for the work that they've done. So yes. thank you. You're very, very good for them. Well, I, I, I just want to have a shout out to the one per there's one person who has kept this thing the glue over the last twenty or thirty years. And that's Gary, Gary Berg. I, you know, he's been fantastic. And I don't know what we'd have done without him. Super, thank you. So, motion on the table. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Upstate. Okay. Madam Chair, as we're talking about the Part B of DPW reorganization, um, currently DPW is 
for lack of a better word, we are bleeding <laughs> in terms of uh, the fact that when the public works was put together, one or two critical positions were not properly put in place. And also the field superintendent position, which is a very critical position in any public works, was also um, in terms of how to keep that individual in that position alive uh, properly the, was not was not also brought uh, to the board properly, or there was no proper. So right now we have, as I'm speaking to the board right now, we don't have a field superintendent uh, staff. We also don't have a general foreman, an individual who also is in the field, uh, is a working foreman, but he's also a senior staff. We are the director, the field superintendent, and the general foreman governs the whole operations. In many DPWs, every division has a foreman, and uh, some are using the formula we are using, where we feel that there's no need to put a foreman in every division. We have a field superintendent, we have a general foreman. So this way, uh, apart from cost, it's also, it becomes redundant when you have every division. And in my own way of doing things, I'm with the school that you need that money to do work as opposed to overhead costs. So we, that's why we're recommending that the select board will take a look at DPW again because we want to produce. We have a superintendent who was 24 hours on call before my time. And he, for lack of a better word, he became, he is done. He just could not handle it anymore. There was no um, plan B to have someone to relieve him on. And that's the, the job of the general foreman. So we, we met with, the, with our liaison and we explained to Selectman Phil on the danger of, and that's when we requested that the board should up, give us a stipend which uh, I want to thank the board for the opportunity where we have very stipend for the field superintendent. Um, as it's better than nothing compared because we're starting from grand zero. So great for the board. Uh, every of our individual uh, union employee has, uh, when they are called, they, have, they are paid one hour every day, which in the long run becomes an hour and a half over time. So we have, but we have this field superintendent He's on call 24 7. He's the one that, uh, for love of her, sometimes deal with the police. Police deal with him. When everybody's out, it's not there, he's there. But he was not, he was getting no stipend. He was also getting no relief. So the current one got burnt out. There was an opportunity for him to leave. A company came in in water division due to retirement, and he took the position. I tried to keep him for some time. <laughs> But I could not keep him much. <laughs> so, so currently I am I'm the, uh, for lack of a better word, I'm doing general contractor. And uh, it's not been easy to be everywhere. We have an individual who is currently the crew leader. We, we cannot put him in a, to be an acting foreman to assist me in doing some other legwork. Uh, so, so, so we are asking that the board should please have, for lack of a better word, have mercy on public works. We will need this position as soon as possible. And also it will help us in our overall um, goal to be able to have enough personnel. This general foreman we also assist sewer. Because if you look at our sewer division right now, uh, we are very, very, the staffing is also not ideal. We have the chief plant operator. At that position, he should not be the one going around every pump station to look at what is happening. It's too expensive for the town. But this general foreman will join the crew whereby the chief plant op operator, his job or her job should be to take care and manage the plant. Right now, that's not what we are doing. Also, for the board to take a look at, critical look at that position right now. Uh, I recommend that that position should be removed from the union. 
it's a management position I don't know why it's in the union. And in, in hardly, a, I as a director of public works or even the board, it will not be able to manage that position. And currently, yeah, I see it as something that is of urgent because the sewer division needs to be managed. We have, it's not because of the individual who is there right now. It just, I'm talking about position. Currently, we have the individual who is there as also the union president. So there's no way for him to be able to manage his rank and file. And even if you, as a manager, I want to manage, uh, every manager has to be accountable, including myself. But a manager under, the, under that kind of umbrella, it creates a situation where sharing or the next few superintendent can come before the board and say, I want to be a union member also. There's no way for me to sit to the board now because we have someone. So, so I also have spoken to the town administrator about this. I've spoken to the selectman Phil about this. And uh, in the course of my daily trying to handle things, if the board take a critical lens, this general former will be someone who also has some knowledge of a sewer. He can also do some of those things. And also I believe that the <coughs> chief operator we have right now is very knowledgeable about what we're trying to do. But I think that position should be out of the union. Thank you, Manager. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things on that. I'll try to make it <laughs> So the superintendent's currently in the budget. Yes. The foreman position is not can that be covered, covered under the current budget? No, uh, we were asking for the F, FY20. All right. yes. And how much is that roughly? Uh, but it'll be, we're looking for 55 to 60. Okay. And split between the three. And split, uh, split between the three. And then. Um, can I just yeah. one thing? Um, one of the reasons, too, and I'll just say that we're having with the interviewing process. We've had people come in, and that's been yes. that nobody nobody wants to give their life twenty four seven for a job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> no. As soon as they hear that, they go, "Oh, okay, sorry." All the ones you had are retired out. There's only a yeah. couple of us left with both lives that haven't retired. I'm retired. Die hard. I'm not going to retire you for that, though. <laughs> really? Oh. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, I guess it's a couple issues. Uh, as far as removing the, the employees from, the management employees from the union, I think it's a good idea. It's in line with what we've done everywhere else in town. Um, so that would have to um, come up with because it's been negotiated, so that would be at our next, next contract negotiations that we would have to propose that. Okay. And then, um, now I know the DPW is next year as far as the budget priority mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. So I, I is is this something that we could, if we don't have the money to fund it, at least vote for the reorganization now as kind of an an unfunded position, worst case, and that way we can start working toward it. And then if we're able to find the money, pay for it, uh, do it that way. At least we can start working toward. The reorganization process. Fine with me. Fine with me. Make a motion. Make a motion that we um, <laughs> accept the second recommendation from the DPW director to reorganize the um, management structure to include a general foreman position within the DPW at such time as funding becomes available. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Upstate. Thank you, Manager. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Anything on the town meeting warrant that we really need to talk about tonight? Well, you have um, three bites with the apple on your schedule. You've got enough time to do another one. Um, so 
if you want to pace yourself tonight, if you've got time to work on that tomorrow. Uh, the easy ones would be the consent agenda ones. These are all strictly housekeeping. We didn't do this already? We've already you, done those. You agreed to, you were very clear that you were agreed to put them on the consent agenda, but no, you did not recommend them. Oh, we need to vote on our recommendation. Uh, back to the consent agenda for a minute. I'm going to go on record that I voted for the consent agenda, but I did not excuse myself for the DPW water position, so I'm going to make sure okay. that's okay. clear. Yep. So noted. Abstain where you should have. Yes. I forgot. <laughs> so. So articles one through six are the, the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one allows us to accept and expend grant money without having to go back to town meeting. Number two is a mandated chapter ninety appropriation. Uh, three is short-term borrowing in case we get into a cash shortage. Mm -hmm. We've never had to do this, but it's nice to have that. Um, number four, we're still developing this one. That this is the one where we take old fund balances and return them to the uh, pocket they belong to. Um, and we typically put in $26,000 a year for replacement of the water filters at the Callahan well. Mm -hmm. We're building that over a 10-year period for a total cost of $260,000. Mm -hmm. And then CPA Administrative, and Andy, can you confirm that you were asking for $2,000? Yeah. Yeah, that's for their administrative expenses. To the CPA? It does. It does. Okay. It does. All right. I'll make a motion to accept or rec approve. Yeah. To um, recommend the consent agenda items to town meeting. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on that? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Finance committee, do you want to take this uh, vote now, or do you want to wait? Probably all the holes aren't filled in yet, are they, for you? Yeah, and I, and I, I just wasn't sure with the CPA um, administrative that the two thousand dollars. What, Andy, is that for? Are you, is that for the looking to increase <coughs> that out of our budget due to looking for like the um, someone to take the minutes and do all that? Is that what that's for? Well, of course, it hasn't been decided yet, but. Yes, that's what it's looking for. Just okay. to give you some perspective, that amount was $15,000 for the current fiscal year, so this is a big reduction. Right, well, that was to pay for the uh, CPA so study by the Planning Commission, so that's, that's <coughs> Okay. Okay, so this is just reducing it from the 15 to the 2. So for even, even other expenses, it's not additional for that expense that's been discussed. Okay. And I just had to clear that up. <laughs> Do you have a motion? Well, and Valerie stepped away though. They don't have to. Yeah. Um, I think we'll, what we'll do is um, we'll just plan. We were just listening in case there's anything we want to add. And we're just going to plan a separate meeting and, and bang these through. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Can I just mention one on capital real quick? Because it would be easy for us to just, it's a question that came up at the capital planning committee what meeting. Number is that? Which one, it's 10? number 10. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the municipal building committee has recommended an on-call consultant um, and placed a line item for $50,000 in there. Is it capital? Item? Yeah, one, I don't know if it should be in capital, but two, it's for the purpose of us having someone to oversee the three projects if we need any kind of help um, for those Wait, projects. We're kind of heavy on that, aren't we? Yeah, we just we already have the OPMs. Got, and yeah, we just hired. You got the one from the committee now. Got the one from the committee too for the um, senior center. I thought we had the Larry discussion Tuttle. with the huh? municipal. Larry Tuttle. Tuttle. Larry Tuttle. That would be him. That, that this would be to cover his fees if we needed to use him 
I think we already have included I, that. I thought we already did that the with the building committee. Was the building committee? Yeah, so the building committee has um, run down their accounts, uh, so they only have about five thousand dollars left in their on-con called consultant account. So that's got to carry us. Oh, okay, so this will be over and above with whatever. So this would be, be re punishing. Oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. But you know, so one, I didn't know if it should be in capital first, and two. I didn't know if we wanted to have that money available and then find somewhere else in the budget. Well, if it's going to be ongoing, I mean, it's, it's got to be funded somewhere. Yeah, another two years on this, so. Yeah. Your final ask for capital says is that it's a $25,000 expense, uh, five year use of life, or anything involving a building, which includes design. So, the consultants would. How many years have we had in Shepherd? Two? Three or four at this oh, point. Oh, has been. Mm -hmm. I mean, the on-call consultant. How long has it lasted? Yeah. No, how how long has he been with us so far? Two years, three years. Why don't I say three or four years I, now? I don't know. I know that we voted on the, that fifty thousand in, in two thousand fourteen. Yeah. So it has okay. lasted. Um, okay. It has that lasted that long. But yeah. I think the. And if we were going to continue on that basis, <laughs> we wouldn't need to put fifty thousand in. Unless it's the, except that it's going to be used more heavily while the buildings are being built. Is yeah, everything's that, getting that active. Was, that, right? that was what it was. Yeah, for. everything's getting active right now. Yeah. So we're right. just trying to so see. So it is expected it would be used a little more rapidly over the next yeah. couple of years. We typically do uh, operational budget in the, in the spring town meeting and then in the fall town meeting we do our capital because we have a lot more money available for capital. Your free cash has been certified and so forth. Right now if you did the on-call consulting, the only source of funding you have would be borrowing. Uh, so that's why you put it in capital right now. So that's why it's in there right now. Okay. So I don't know if we want to want to continue that and think we're going to need that. How much is left? Five thousand. Five thousand. So that would have to make it not gonna get through to fall town meeting. Basically. There is, an, there is another account for the uh, general OPM that's not associated with these two build three building projects, and that's got twenty five thousand in it. So we could use that for OPM like services for the supervision of the other projects. So a lot, um, over, a lot of overseeing here. Four doctors are working but Danielle isn't, so I'll talk to you later. Okay. Okay. So you're so not you're not out of money at this point. Um, we can defer it and use that account in order to get us through to fall town meeting then. Yeah, so we have one account with 25 and that's got five, that'll give us 30. 30 mm -hmm. So we could take it out of here and then in the fall, put it back in for, the, for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it looks yeah, like we're gonna need in the fall, yeah. And the heavy period's gonna mean the summer is when we're gonna have the overlap and. Correct. Yeah, right. demolition and construction and all that happening at one time. That's mm -hmm. gonna be the, and certainly we have a surplus in the senior center construction budget. We don't know the results of the bids for the library, but that is also another legitimate source of funding for supervision of three projects. Yeah, it's an engineering service that would be so I agree with David. I'd, my preference would be to utilize the m money that we have and address it in the fall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the five thousand. Five thousand plus the twenty five for the OPM. Okay. Which hasn't been borrowed. Because we have not used it. So but it's but it's been approved, right? It's been approved. Right. So we are but as long as we don't spend any of it until July one, we actually don't have a borrowing left in this fiscal year. Okay. Right. 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 So so if you if so the five thousand is to get us to June, June. and then you know, we can we can, go, uh, we can begin spending July one and make sure it's on the next borrowing. Okay. So do we need to alert the municipal building committee to the mm -hmm. conversation just mm -hmm. so if they have an issue with this they can Yeah, I mean I can I can let them know that that's what we're thinking. Okay. And we have time now. Yeah. Okay, so. yeah. 
And it was just something that came up at Capitol because do we need it, don't we need it? Yep. It's a select board's decision. So wanted to kind of toss could it to the board. Do, could it be covered by the senior center budget temporarily Rambers. until that's approved and then yeah, do a funds transfer after the fact? Is that acceptable or can we do can we would that be an account uh, journal? Uh, no, if you're for one not within the borrowing then yeah. I wouldn't do that. But um, do we need to have an article? Do we need to vote on switching the purpose at all of the, the that OPM, the original <laughs> 50 that was changing the purpose for the 24? Or you say it's within the scope of the program? Well, I think it's within the scope of the program because you're supervising OPMs. That's that's what they're doing. Okay, so and it's like a just super used, supervision. Yeah, he was just to be used as necessary. As necessary, necessary. anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah, because we're already in April. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. Once the big shovel goes in the ground, then we'll know. Then we'll know. Okay. So are we, are we good? Are we holding off, or what are we? We'll hold yeah. off on the fifty thousand. Do we want to make a, a motion, or do we? Do we just? Is it good I enough don't think to we just? Need to. Yeah. Okay. We have the money. No. Yeah, it good. seems like it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're good for that. Okay. okay. Anything else on the town warrant? Well, do you want to talk about your um, really liquor not. licenses? No, no, you don't want to. <laughs> well, motion to approve. <laughs> <laughs> the liquor licenses. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I gave you three, and I sort of I arbitrarily split them between malt, and malt, malt and wine, and all alcoholic. This is for the off-premise liquor licenses. Yeah. Um, council says you can add more licenses because that doesn't affect your quota for the marijuana retail establishments. Mm -hmm. I say add, add more, and if we don't use them, we don't use them. But I mean, instead of making another warrant next year, why, why not add five, seven, ten, whatever you think we can get through the, the legislature? Because you don't know what we're going to have for build out, too. Right. Exactly. You don't know who's coming in or right And uh, honestly, I. We missed a boat on the mirror. Oh, here we go. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see her? It was just on the news again tonight. Oh, Money my. Millions of dollars. Lord. Good gravy. But as far Illegal as drugs. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> as far as the liquor licenses, what do we want to ask? Pick a number. Well, I, I mean, I think it goes to, what will, will, does the legislature have some sort of a arbitrary arbitrary yeah. well, for specific the, thought process. They don't. The last time we asked for more liquor licenses was for the on premise and we asked for twelve, six of each. Mm -hmm. So So let's do ten. Do five of each. Yeah. Five See of what each we get. Sure. Okay. Worst case is it's a no, best case is it's more revenue. It seems well, far more efficient to do it that way. Yeah. The only thing I'm thinking is if we add a lot of them, you risk part putting certain people out of business, you know. But I don't know. Could try. Well, we're not obligated to grant them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But right now we're we're out. We don't have the ability to grant anymore. Yeah. We don't mm -hmm. have that ability. Yeah, you yeah. gave your last one to pride. We okay. remember. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful glass room, man. Been in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah. No. We can do as many as we want, and then see how it goes. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I feel. I feel you want to move on. So. I, you got the feeling. All right. Okay. Um, Most Holy Redeemer Parish Hall lease. So we have a lease here. If you would be so kind as to uh, vote to sign it. Motion uh, to approve yeah. the lease. Keep this project moving forward. Is there a second, please? Second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm going to abstain just as a member of the Parish Finance Council. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have the uh, Senior Center Library and Fire Station updates. Anybody here from the senior center? I can say a couple things. Uh, we, we had a meeting um, yesterday on the senior center building committee, but 
not much happening other than uh, some stuff about the sign um, on the side of the building. And we're trying to see if the sign they've selected is okay to put up in Hadley. Um, the big thing with the senior center is they have a tax clinic coming up on the 26th, which is next Tuesday. And then they will be closing down Wednesday and be closed down for the entire week for moving over the Most Holy Redeemer and will be opened back up on April 1st. That's the plan. Moving forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. When's the uh, current date for groundbreaking? We don't have an exact date yet. We, all the permits are submitted, okay. but we have to put up the fence and then you know do all kinds of stuff, so it's still a little bit in limbo. We're starting to meet on a weekly basis, though, for construction, so we should be getting more close. But but as far as uh, residents seeing you know fence go up or thing, things moving along, what do you think is kind of a projected? I mean, within the next month, I'm thinking. Matt, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in April, I'm hoping we're moving stuff over there. So demolition should start beginning in May. Yeah, I don't know what the dem the demolition depends on the library and their schedule and all that. I don't know where that's at. Yeah, I think that that's going to be in the month of May. Um, so the library building committee met last week, um, intended to look at some preliminary uh, numbers, and the architect informed us that there was he had received it really last minute, and there were some numbers that didn't quite jive with the original um, <coughs> pre bid that had come out, so he wanted some additional time. So we've scheduled another, another meeting for next Tuesday, and then we'll have a much better handle on um, on it at that time. But still, you know, I think we're maybe like a week or two pushed out from where we had been when we last reported, which would still put the, the bid process um, out just a couple of weeks, but then the, the uh, if everything goes according to Hoyle, the demolition of the building starting in, in May. And when is the auction of s stuff inside the current hooker school? Is it the seventh? So basically, as soon as everybody's out of there, yes, yeah. we can set a date for sure. And, okay. And, but w I guess we want to make sure that there's nothing left over that somebody might say, "Oh, wait, we need that too late." So uh, unless you have a more firm date, but I think we we're just going to yeah. Wait until as soon as soon as it, as soon as you sign the lease, I'm going to give up. Uh, give uh, Douglas auctioneers a telephone call and yeah. start getting the date certain. Okay. Did, do we know if the <coughs> 350th committee has gone in to do any removal of the... So Al Alan was saying that um, they've already taken some of the hooks out of there that they were going to sell off and the bricks, they're, they're working on that. So it, it's in progress. I don't know if they've finished yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sub-fire station committee, we met last week. And uh, to the, it'll cost us $5,000 for the... Uh, renderings to give to the planning board for the system that we put on uh, as a alternate, alternate. For the uh, underground, underground system long story. Correct. Uh, we have a new date for April 2nd. For the planning board. Yeah. For the planning board. We've answered all the questions. We have designs for a drive through driveway. The committee voted on mm -hmm. the best option that we felt. Mm -hmm. We should be. Ready to go. Moving ours along too. Okay. Uh, items not anticipated by the chair. Gifts to the town. This is a housekeeping issue. One of the nice things that happens is that every now and then people decide to give gifts to the town for spe specific purposes. The Hadley Mothers Club mm -hmm. has generously donated uh, money for a computer. Uh, we don't have an account for that purpose, um, so the select board can vote to establish an account. Um, that way we can tuck that money into the proper place and use it for the purpose. And in the related vein, people give money to for animal care. We do do animal control, and we don't have a place to keep that money as a gift uh, for that purpose. So if you could take a vote to establish both those gift accounts, that would be very helpful. And thank you for your donations. Oh, what, what was it? Who was it? 
Mother's Club. Mother's Club and people who donate for animal control no care. individual mm -hmm. names that we can think. I'll see if I can't find names that you can think. Yeah. <coughs> uh, <coughs> <certainly> thank Mother's <coughs> Club. Yeah. Make it a motion? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd like a motion to accept both <laughs> letters, but I'd like to acknowledge the people that donated. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much for your donations. Uh, uh, on the Mother's Club, no, all right, we can do it after. Mm -hmm. and Mike has, uh, Chief's Bank and Able has uh, requested uh, the use of Hooker School for Fire Department training following the closure of the space to the public. And prior to its demolition, the fire department would like to use the site for training, including search and rescue, hose deployment, firefighting, saving ourselves, practical exercises, basement fire attack, ladder training, and if allowed, uh, we would also request to conduct roof operations as well as ventilation. All the training would be non-live fire, and we will secure any penetrations made in the flat roof or floors of the structure following the training. This site will provide our department with great opportunity to improve our skills and allow our new members the exposure to some critical skills, as well as training of officers on scene, size up, incident command, and surviving a May Day. We will also be looking to practice jointly with some of our neighboring departments as well as the police department on active shooter hostile event training, including rescue task force with force protection. If you have any questions or concerns, please con contact me on behalf of the members of the Hadley Fire and Police Departments. We greatly appreciate your consideration of this request. The only comment I would say is, can we do it after the auction's complete? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't want any fixtures to be damaged that we can sell on. <laughs> Probably have a short window between. Right. Yeah, and I'm assuming that abutters will be notified too, so there's no alarm. Oh, cause for alarm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 well, like the neighbors on Middle Street. You know. The only other <laughs> comment I had is I know it has to be abated. Like certain things need to be removed mm -hmm. um, for like asbestos and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if you guys be doing anything that would make yeah, that harder. Should. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, no. We're just going to be crawling around in the building and using fake smoke. And the only penetrations we would be doing would be on the roof, uh, mm -hmm. just practicing cutting trench cuts and things like that. Um, we would only use a drywall wall, maybe on the third floor, um, just for trying to get out of one room into another. That's what we usually do if we if we come across a home or a business that's available to us. Yeah. I think I think he has a good clue of what um, is asbestos and not. <laughs> yeah, I was just flagging that. We would love to have you come out and train with us too. <laughs> yeah, actually see what we do. Yeah. Be great. <laughs> Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Understand. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Um, are there any announcements this evening? I just have one, but does anybody else have anything? Just uh, another slope. Candidate three second day and candidate sleep. Yep. Okay. Yep, and so the the dates, you want, do you want to give the dates? Well, the Mother's Club uh, Candidates Night is Monday, um, April, April 1st, April yeah. Fool's Day. I think this is Such an appropriate more than one occasion, date. which is always appropriate. I know. I've been, I've been reminded <laughs> of the date. Uh -huh. um, okay. And the meet and greet starts at 6.30, and then I believe the candidates roll into their presentations and uh, question and answer period starting at 7 p.m. Uh, the recycling. Date yeah. is the April 27th, I think. Yeah. yeah, that sounds right. Okay, so April 27th is um, the annual Mother's Club Recycling, which is always the most wonderful day of the year for many of us trying to call things and um, support a good cause. That's usually at the Headley Elementary School. At the elementary school, and it's not uncommon for there to be an accompanying bottle and can drive, too, so we'll see if that's yeah. happening as well. Um, and then the other big reminder is the fact that we do have an election coming up that is Tuesday, April 9th. Um, we do have contested races. We also have um, a writing candidate. So um, hopefully we will get a wonderful turnout and everybody can exercise their uh, right to vote. One of the wonderful things about living 
in this country because not everybody can. So just a reminder. Yes. Can I make one announcement? Absolutely. Just for folks in North Hadley, um, we're again doing the basic sex training program through Hampshire County. And this coming weekend is search and rescue at the North Hadley um, Park and Rec building. So there'll be big smoke coming in and out of the building. There'll be about there'll be 30 firefighters from all communities in Hampshire County, Franklin County, and Hamden County there. Where's the training? training? It's at the North Hadley Park and Rec building. We use it every year. Um, North Hadley Hall. North 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 yeah, North yeah. Hadley Hall. <laughs> <laughs> they will just be crawling in and out of the building. I'm going to get my wish. It will not be flames. <laughs> it will just be fake smoke. Damn. <laughs> One way to get rid of it. <laughs> That's this weekend, is it? Uh, this coming Sunday, it'll be probably between 8 and 4 some, oh, at some geez. point. And you'll put that out on your Facebook for a public yes. service announcement? Yes. And I think we have a big announcement with uh, congratulations to our girls basketball team, varsity basketball team, for their uh, Western Mass title. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations to them and certainly gave it a good college try for the uh, state championship also. So. We're very proud of you and thank you all for um, being excellent sportsmanships awards. Should go to all of you, so thank you. And I did have some uh, condolences this evening. Uh, so condolences from the select board this evening to the family of Joan Petroquin, uh, to the family of Leanne Carlin, to the family of Doris Markers, and also to the uh, family of Tom Clemick. Um, I personally knew Tom from uh, serving at 4-H and was very active with the 4-H's of uh, Hampshire County. So. Did you mention um, Mr. Venman as well? Venman. Bill Venman. Bill Venman. Yeah. Uh, Peter Venman's. Oh. I didn't hear that either. Yeah, so it was in, yeah, it was in he, the he, he passed away Saturday morning. There's going to be a service on um, Saturday at the Methodist Church. <laughs> <coughs> Condolences to that family also. Thank you. Uh, any other thing? Oh, the rest of the list. Oh, okay. Announcements. Excise bills due April 1st. Collector's office open until 6 that night. Uh, candidates night April 1st. Hopkins Academy meet and greet begins at 630. Last call for candidates for dedication of the annual report and Fred Oakley Award. Please submit to the select board's office by email at info at hadleymass.org or by calling 413-586-0221. Town, annual town election, as Molly said, is April 9th from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And there is a rabies clinic, so April 13th, 2019 from 1 to 3 at the Hadley Public Safety Complex. Right. Anything else? No? Good. Alright. So we so will entertain a motion to go into executive session. Please. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um so we would make a motion that we go into that the select board enter into executive session for the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A2. Um, to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel, um, specifically the town treasurer and the town fire chief. I can always second. Second. I don't have that line, so uh, roll call vote. And as treasurer, as I do declare. As treasurer? I mean, as a <laughs> chair. <laughs> I haven't the taken the treasurer yet. job yet. Yeah. Uh, as chair, I do declare um, this would be Detrimental, detrimental to in the, in the interest of negotiations to do it in open session. Roll call vote with Skevitz? Yes. Phil? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Stanley? Yes. And Trevor? Yes. Um, not to, not reconvene. to reconvene, not to reconvene in open session. Be.